For thousands of years, the islanders and aborigines of Australia have hunted in their traditional ways. During the white man's rush to civilization, the native culture suffered a rapid decline. Today, there is an enthusiastic resurgence in the desire to preserve this culture and teach the young generation to become, once more, the timeless hunters. In the Torres Strait Islands, a conflict does exist between the traditional culture and the white man's civilization. At Murray Island, the coming of the white man suppressed many of the native traditions. The younger generation have drifted away from their island paradise to provincial towns. The elders are concerned. Their culture is dying. A cultural revival is now directed toward the school-age young. Give them a goal, an incentive and pride in their culture and they may stay on their beautiful island home. Nothing is tougher than a native foot. The coral reefs off Murray have always abounded in marine life. These islanders choose to use primitive methods in their hunt for crayfish. Bare feet and venomous stonefish do present a danger. Calluses and coral cuts scar their limbs. Eddie Mabo directs the Tapura boys in how to drag a green turtle ashore. Roast turtle for dinner tonight. The children keep a daily record of all turtle catches as a school cultural project. It's a pity they are mostly females, often ready to lay their eggs. Over 1,500 green turtles are caught each year in the Torres Strait. Encircling Murray Island is a network of stone fish traps. They've been there for centuries. Legend says they were once a huge snake which turned to stone. My two boys, Dean and Adam, accompany the Tapua kids on a routine check of the traps. It's a lot of fun for the kids. Any broken sections of the trap must be repaired. As the tide falls, the shallow water fish species, like the alligator garfish, turn to swim out with the tide and find themselves trapped. The garfish catch will feed the kids and the turtle will feed several families. Frigate birds are kept as pets. Their wings are trimmed so they can't fly away. Turtle is cooked in the traditional sand oven. First a fire is prepared to heat the cooking stones.
The hot stones are placed under and inside the turtle carcass. A layer of green leaves covered with bags and a mound of sand completes the oven. Cooking will take about three hours. The kids don't have to wait, their catch is cooked in minutes. It's not just the burnt bits that are crunchy. The blood from the second turtle draws a predator, a big shark, a three meter whaler. Islanders tend to be blase about any dangers, but this shark has them running scared. Wilfred Tapua's idea is to use one turtle flipper to catch a monster that will feed the whole village. The people of Murray feel a need to protect their culture, not just the folklore, but as a way of life. Their population has dwindled to a third of its size in 30 years. Those who remain, mostly the young and the old, keep alive the traditions of their ancestors. Are there any problems with the Murray Islanders trying to retain their culture? I think the major problem is with, uh, with them trying to combat with the influence of uh, outsiders and, uh, of course, retaining their own is a, is a major problem because of these influences. There is a uh, conflict between the system of the church and my culture, and Murray Allen culture, and my identity, and therefore, what I'm trying to do, what and do with the with a lot of uh, the Torres Strait people, is to blend those two together. It, it'll take time; it's very painful, uh, but we hope we will do that by by uh, freeing the expression uh, of our faith and our worship and everything. Early missionaries destroyed their pagan rites and sacred objects. The famous drum of myrrh carved in the shape of a shark, survived because it was hidden away. Its ominous beat once signalled the headhunting warriors to prepare for a raid. Their target was usually a Papuan village. They believed a man had not proved himself until he had taken at least one human head in battle. Kidnapped victims were doomed. Those killed in battle had their heads cut off with a bamboo knife and strung on a cane loop to be taken home in triumph. Their masks and ceremonial adornments were symbols in a ritualized drama of their awesome power, which no outsider was allowed to witness or return alive to tell the tale. Since, from, since I've learned from my father, he taught me it's become a part of our, our lifestyle here. And we share, we don't, we don't keep it for ourselves. We share it for our kids. And we like to them to carry on with our culture. Today, they have modern schools and they learn something from the school, which is part of their education. And we need this culture and it doesn't going to leave them. The 
ceremonies aren't held anymore. It's a thing in the past, but they, the competition, the dances are uh, continuing. Of course, occasionally we have uh, quite a big competition between two groups or sometimes three groups. This sardine scoop dance leads to the shark dance, the story of Bizam and Cuscus, who put on the shark masks to chase the sardines and turned into sharks. Thursday Island, affectionately called TI by the locals, is a colourful potpourri of races and the main destination for those emigrating from their island paradise homes. They come for the white man's technology, his array of goods. Children learn by their parents' example and they are growing up watching their parents drinking, not working and waiting for the welfare checks in the mail. Pearling symbolises a romantic era in the Torres Strait. It began in 1868 and paved the way for warriors and hunters to become pearl divers. It was a time when the natives were gainfully employed. Plastics ruined the industry, but pearl culture has brought about its revival. The lure of the pearl seduced the divers into the perilous strong currents, the deep water and the bends. And a short life indeed. The Boigu Island community exists on a few hectares of low land surrounded by a mangrove swamp. The New Guinea coast is only a few kilometres away. The murky water abounds with turtle, crocodile and dugong. When a boy reaches puberty, his uncle makes him a special dugong harpoon called a wop. His initiation into manhood requires him to harpoon his first dugong. 18-year-old Greg Toby is ready to prove his manhood. Uncle Dick Gabuna gives Greg a lesson on how to hold the harpoon. We travel over 10 kilometres before the first dugong is sighted. Dungle, they call it. Greg Toby is very pleased. He's now a Zogowa Gaka, a special hunter. A rope must be looped around the dugong's tail so that the animal can be firmly held and rolled upside down to slowly drown. They catch about 12 to 15 dugong each month. In the olden days, our fathers and forefathers fathers used to go out here to catch dugong. But in our days, uh, we travel uh, out six to five miles a day to uh, catch dugongs now. And we understand this could have been caused by the, uh, the using of outboard motors. And uh, this may have caused uh, the dugongs to move away from the natural uh, feeding grounds here. This man 
he's the last of the Kava, and if he dies, there's no young people following him up. So when he dies, it will be going with it. The Boigu natives call it the WAP dance, a pantomime of all the procedures leading to the harpooning of a dugong. This is Wonga Beach, north of Port Douglas. The Pitt family moved here from Murray Island. Ted's children go to a private school, and the Pitt family are what you could call your everyday Aussie. But Ted's link with his Torres Strait culture is still very strong. Living under the white man's laws, he cannot catch dugong or turtle, but he does want to teach his children all the skills his father taught him. In the mangroves around Port Douglas, Ian and Ryan have a lesson in how to catch a mud crab. Ryan? Yeah. I've got him. Okay. Yeah, there it comes. Oh. Right. Ready? Beauty. Do you think we're going to do another half? It's like a buck, eh? You had a tell a buck? See one underneath, they're held by the flaps underneath, they're narrower than the female. The female's wider, the small than it is. Look, Ryan, there's two fighting. They're going in the hole here years ago. Let's well, see if we can get, get one in. Come on, mate. That's it, keep them coming up. Come on, push him down. First crab, Ryan. You gonna grab him or what? Me? Yeah, come on, grab him before he goes in. Come on. Grab him. Beauty. I wanna pull the last one. Oh, this is what I need. Spine here. Ian, your turn now. You see if you can tie him up, mate. No, 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 around there, mate. Come on, stay on there. Around under this nipple, no, like no, that. No, up there. Around so there. Keep the nipples rolling tight. Now look what you're doing here. Had a pretty good day today. Yeah? What happened? Well, we got a few crabs. Ryan caught his first one. And Ryan morning. caught one out of the hole himself. Yep. You're just getting too good, bud. You gotta take over from Dad one day. Yeah. Hey? Okay, put it under. Daughter Edwina also learns bush cooking skills Very from Ted's carefully. wife, Everest. Very carefully. The other one wants to come too. Never mind. We've got them both in one shot. Ryan, you're gonna come and have something to eat. He likes crabs. Good day today, boys. Yeah. Who wants the first nipper? Me. You think we should go turtle hunting tomorrow, boys, or what? Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow might be a big day. <laughs> Pretty good way to make it spear. Don't <laughs> buy it from the shop, make it yourself. That's right. We're Except taught how to make prong. We're taught how to make these. My yeah. grandfather. She must keep the tension on the string to keep the timber bind. Why does it have to be tight? See, it doesn't pull out, Edwina. Just a spear of fish. Well, that's looking good now, Teddy. Mm. Yes, Lynn. I'm, I think it's rather important that the children learn 
the traditional ways of hunting because we're virtually living in a white man's world today and the, it's hunting in traditional ways is phasing out and uh Yes, I suppose if they don't learn in another generation, there'll be nobody to teach, nobody well, that is, remembers like you. Well, this is true. The coral reefs offshore are not unlike the reefs off Murray Island. The creatures are the same. Dean and Adam take this opportunity to learn the skills from a master hunter. Hold your spear better, mate. Oh, yeah. Don't forget reflection. Why don't you hold your spear better? Yeah, that's better, isn't it? You've got one. Good one. We'll take him home tonight. We'll cut his tail off. If you get poked by the fins for a short while, you'll have more than happy moments. They're painful as a stonefish, but they're very good eating. Adam needs a little more practice. Teddy Pitt's sons have learnt a lot today and sharpened their hunting skills. It's been a wonderful experience for my two boys to share in this learning process. The children of Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands have an opportunity to learn hunting skills from their fathers 
at an early age. From the day they can swim, they are out in canoes. The islanders have developed ingenious ways of catching fish. There are 70 methods of fishing, each one for a different species. Catching alligator garfish is particularly amazing. This spider provides the lure. The web is spun onto a forked stick in a continuous loop and carefully rolled off and tied. The kite is used to make the lure skip lightly over the water. Alligator gar have sharp interlocking teeth and these are caught up in the sticky lure. Only a few are skilled in the art of kite fishing and they pass this skill down to their sons. Small herring are netted by the children to use as bait for an ingenious fishing trick. The mantis shrimp lives in a hole on the reef flat. The claw of another mantis shrimp is tied to a thin stick with the baitfish above. The idea is to place a baited stick in each hole and wait. When the shrimp reaches up for the bait, the stick wriggles. It's a signal for the hunter. A sharp tug and the claw hooks into the shrimp's body. Jungle rabo vines are used to corral fish on the reef top. It's a team effort. Two long vines meet in the lagoon and the semicircle is slowly tightened by doubling up the vines as they wade toward the beach. It's very effective. There's enough fish here to feed the village. The bomb vine has a different purpose. When its leaves are crushed, it becomes a drug. The leaves are mixed with sand. This will help the drug disperse in the water. Crayfish hide under ledges during the day and are hard to reach. When the natives want to catch a particular fish, they first study it and then select the right technique. The drug is pushed into the coral. It doesn't kill the crayfish, just makes it groggy enough to stagger out of its hole. <laughs> Villagers in the Lachlan Islands hunt for their fish in yet another way. They lay a series of nets in the lagoon, each one weighted down by many seashells. <laughs> then the canoes turn back in a line. Long poles thump the surface and the frightened fish race into the net. Goggle divers stand by to make sure none escape. They move to another section of the lagoon and lay the nets again. The coral reefs of the Pacific are alive with fish, but the goggle diver's equipment is very primitive, and they only succeed in spearing the smaller fish. The sea is also the domain of the shark, and like it or not, 
the native divers have to live with it. Every day, the hunters must compete with the shark for food. The Trobian Island shark hunters have a healthy respect for the shark. Before the hunt, they accept special leaves from their chief and believe these leaves to have magical properties. The magic leaves are rubbed over everything. This will keep them safe from the sharks they are about to hunt. To attract the sharks, they use a unique rattle. It's made from coconut shells cut in halves. The rattle gives out a signal not unlike the vibrations emitted by struggling fish. Soon there are many oceanic whaler sharks beneath the frail canoes. They're excited and the clackety clack of the rattles are goading them into a feeding frenzy. <laughs> the choice bait should be snapped up quickly now that the rattle has created a feeding mood in the sharks. The attached boy will signal a strike and help to tie the shark. Shark hunting is not an activity for kids, but they eagerly help to haul the catch ashore. High in the Mossman Gorge, north of Cairns, the Aboriginal spirit of Kubiri watches over the Gugu Yalanji tribe and takes care of the creatures that live in the clear mountain stream. The mountain spirit overlooks the Gugu Yolanji community who now reside in modern homes but still keep in touch with the forest and its creatures. Roy Gibson leads his family clan deep into the rainforest. It's a journey back in time to teach the youngsters how to hunt and gather bush tucker in the ways of their forefathers. Listen to the whispering spirits of the dream time, Roy tells the boys, as they pass along the centuries-old hunting trail high in the mountain gorge. A gunya shelter is needed, a humpy, Roy calls it. It's quickly fashioned from saplings and palm fronds and tied together with lengths of vine. A young hunter is not complete until he's dressed in ochre. There is an Aboriginal saying, he who loses his dreaming is lost. A good lesson in mythology is to view their rock art. This is plainly in there, what you see here. This is just a new one we just put on to show you what we got in this rainforest and the things what we eat, 
the animal we eat in that. And now, what I'm showing you, all the CNA is painting the back. Okay, the first one here, what's this one here, Terrence? Bingo. What? Bingo. Bingo? Mama, what's that one there? Password. Password. Okay, I'll show you this one on top of you then. So this one here is a bummer, that's the one, a pretty pretty man. They reckon used to come from other areas to come down to come and kill different people who they hate. The ones who pass their border, that's it, that's kill them. And they're the one, he's a dancing man, he can kill you. The one up here, so that's a turtle name. Okay. Understanding nature for the Aborigine is a continuous study from birth. He learns to read the signs of everything that lives and has a bearing on his food supply. Okay, boys. This could be the best place for the crayfish in there. I want you to go look in there and get that crayfish out of there. Hey, got a bun? Grab it properly, Terrence. Grab it properly. <laughs> Grab it properly, quick. Terrence. Grab it properly. Yeah. May. Yeah. Minya, minya. Minya, minya. Black bean seeds are poisonous. Aborigines only eat them after a lengthy process to leach out the poison. Crushed raw and tossed in the pool, they provide another source of food, drugged crayfish. When the poison settle down, we sit down and wait until it goes down and then we gotta wait for a while, okay? Let's go get out. Pray for Shadow. The current carries the poison into the crevices. When ingested, the drug works quickly and the crayfish stagger from their lair. Come on, Pick the gun, man. Come here, pick the gun. Grab him, 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 pick, pick. Here. Come there. Yeah, now we got some minya. Oh, eh? Put them in the bag. Yeah. Come here. Put them in there. Yeah, eh? Yeah, look, Yusuf. Come in, then. Got some mahi here. Wild ginger. All we gonna do, we gonna take it down there. It's a dry fish. We're gonna eat that minya with that and with this, okay? Now, peel them out now. Bring them down there to that humpy down there, okay? Then, but. Hey, <laughs> The breakdown of Aboriginal culture caused by the intrusion of missions and government is now being remedied by people like Roy Gibson of the Gugu tribe. They have always been, first and foremost, hunters and food gatherers. Each creature that the Aborigines meet and hunt, the crocodile, the wallaby, the wild pig, become characters in the pantomime of their ceremonial dances.
Since Dreamtime, they have recorded these wild creatures in ochre on many cave walls. For thousands of years, the Aborigines have lived with the land and hunted the wildlife. This dramatically changed from the day Captain Cook landed. The people were herded from their tribal lands and made to live in confined missions. Only recently have they been allowed to return to their land and practice again their ancient hunting skills. Aborigines at the Holroyd River are on a wallaby hunt. A dingo is two. The Aborigine, like the dingo, has been a loser in the civilization of Australia. We are apt to call him lazy. We forget his powers of endurance in the relentless chase and the patience and skill he uses to stalk his prey. The West Australian coast is a land of rugged beauty, of tidal overflows and caves of incredible rock art the Aborigines call Wanginas. These are their gods who came from the sea in the monsoon winds. Some look surprisingly European, smoking pipes, and perhaps are caricatures of our earliest explorers. The Bardi tribe hunted dugong and turtle on a two-section mangrove log raft. They let one half go to be towed by the animal and follow on the other half. Now they use dinghies with outboard motors to run the turtle down. No more is their skill in the chase, only in the final capture. The favourite game for the Bardi kids is hunting the dugong. From this game, great hunters may grow. The dugong calf is only a few days old. The mother will suckle it for two years. Roy Wiggins is a great dugong hunter. He scorns the noisy outboard and sculls his dinghy like the log raft of old. Roy quietly follows his prey, studying its movements and how long it stays down. Young Douglas has the harpoon. Roy calculates when and where the dugong will surface next and quickly sculls in on the target. The dugong hunt varies only a little from place to place. Always there is a mixture of old traditions with new technology. Somehow, the dugong population survives. The Hopevale Aboriginal community north of Cooktown show pride in their homes and well-kept lawns. They are also great dugong hunters. But there is no open season here just a short six weeks permit through January to hunt for their favourite food. The boys learn young, 
Les Gibson teaches his seven-year-old grandson, Dallas, how to rig the harpoon. You watch him? Hold the loop. You understand that? Work it until it's very hard and firm inside the hole. They travel north, past Cape Flattery to the mouth of the Starkey River. The dugong herd migrates south at this time of the year to carve and feed on the seagrass beds. The harpoon is heavy for a little boy, so Clarence Bowen lends a guiding hand. The turtle is lucky. Dallas missed. The smile on the face of a little tiger. His first turtle, now for a dugong. There are well over 50,000 dugong in Australian waters. They do not appear to be an endangered species. They live long, more than 70 years, but breed very slowly, with an average of only one calf every three to nine years. The Hopevale hunters catch perhaps a dozen dugong a year. More are drowned in licensed gill nets. for a kid like Dallas to learn the culture, way of living. Dallas, he now he's come around the age of eight and uh, this is time to teach him the culture where they got to learn how to fish in a traditional way with spear and how to spear a dugong and a turtle. So it's, it's very important, I think, that uh, the whole culture is handed down uh, to the young people. I don't think the white man's law and uh, clothes is and on the dugong doesn't worry us very much. It gives the dugong 12 months to, to multiply and uh, during Christmas when everyone on holiday you've got four weeks of uh, chasing them. So uh, it doesn't bother us very much. Except for some overfishing near the New Guinea coast, the hunters appear to have made little impact on the healthy dugong population around Australia. The prolific turtle population seems to have suffered little also, except in the Torres Strait, where too many females are taken when they come ashore to lay their eggs. 
the Aborigines and Islanders must use these resources wisely. The current enthusiasm to preserve their dying culture will ensure there will always be a new generation of timeless hunters. <laughs>